Mizuma TV back in the building, man. What's going on, y'all? Shout out to Mizuma Nation. Shout out to the Mizuma Mob. We in the building as always, man. I hope everybody's having a blessed, beautiful, positive, productive day. Chilling at the crib right now, man. Feeling extremely blessed. Really having no complaints at all. On the road to 2K, man. We about to hit that 1800 mark. Probably by the end of the day, in all honesty, man. I see that we only need like seven or eight more subscribers, man. Shout out to the nation and the mob for making this possible. All right, y'all. We had a great, great night of boxing last night, man. Shout out to Eris Landy Lara for his beautiful knockout win over Mike Zarafa. That shit was highlight real material, man. And probably one of the knockouts of the year so far, in my opinion, man. The finesse, the accuracy. Just beautiful, beautiful knockout. Um, shout out to... Uh, Roley Romero and Isaac Cruz were putting on a dog fight, man. Roley gave it everything he had, but Isaac Cruz just had his number at the end of the day. So shout out to Isaac Cruz for that. Well, check this little nigga out. Wait, wait, wait. He wildin' up. You get that nigga a little toy and he's tripping. But anyway, <laughs> shout out to Isaac Cruz for his stoppage over Roley Romero, man, and becoming the new WBA you know what I'm saying? Uh, super lightweight champion of the world. And shout out to Sebastian Fundora for his victory over Tim Zhu, man. You know what I mean? He upset a lot of people. I told you guys to not underestimate Sebastian Fundora. I thought that he was more uh, prepared for this uh, fight right here based off of what he had going on in training camp. And I told you guys not to underestimate this man. And then it was very possible that there may be an upset um, coming. And it happened. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to Sebastian Fundora. But speaking of Sebastian Fundora, man, it seems like he's in a pretty rough, tough situation right now, which could be a, a, a gift and a curse at this point in time. A gift because you got many people that want to fight you and you definitely got some money moves on the way. You definitely got some big fights um, that could possibly be made at this point in time. But they might be some sacrifices um, that may have to be made in order to get some of these fights. Now, what am I talking about? Uh, we seen Earl Spence get in the ring last night and call out Sebastian Fundora and express his interest in fighting Sebastian Fundora, even saying in front of him that he, he was going to break him down and whatever that situation may be. And it seems like Earl Spence is extremely optimistic about this fight happening. Now, with Earl Spence, you know, coming off of a bad knockout loss to Terrence Crawford, a lot of people feel like he's not deserving of that opportunity against Sebastian Fundora. You know, Terrence Crawford came on social media and said, yo, you're going to have to wait in line. And, you know, you coming off of a loss, you got to build yourself back up, which is more where toward, this, that's more towards where I'm leaning at this point in time. I don't want to see uh, Earl Spence fight Sebastian Fundura at this point in time. It's a great fight, but I feel like there's better fights that Sebastian Fundura can make at this point in time, which is Terrence Crawford. You know, Terrence Crawford is the pound for pound number one fighter in the world. You know, he just came off of the biggest win of his career against Earl Spence. So I want to see this man fight for two of the world titles at, at, at Super Welterweight. You know what I mean? I would like to see uh, Earl Spence fight Tim Zhu. Why not? You know what I mean? And whoever wins that fight could have that opportunity to face the winner of Terrence Crawford and Sebastian Fundora. That's just what I'm thinking, but it seems like PBC has other plans. Now, from what I'm understanding, um, the WBO president just made an announcement that they're going to mandate the fight between... Uh, Terrence Crawford and Sebastian Fundora as early as next week. So with that being known, um, it seems like the WBO is on top of it. They were going to be the ones that's going to have first dibs on the situation. And I want to see how Sebastian Fundora and his team reacts to this order. You know what I mean? Because when we listen to Samson Lukowicz, who is a part of Sebastian Fundora's team, he says that his job is to put Sebastian Fundora in the best financial situation possible, a.k.a. make him as much money as possible, which is understandable. So I think based off of him saying that, he may feel like the Earl Spence fight may be more uh, satisfying financially. It may be the bigger money fight. You know what I'm saying? If they were to showcase it in Dallas or Texas or wherever at the Cowboys Stadium, it might generate a lot of revenue. So maybe that's exactly why they're looking at that Earl Spence thing, and maybe that's what uh, PBC is really trying to get done, uh, which is why they may have brought Earl Spence over to Vegas and maybe why they brought Earl Spence in the ring to show you what's to come. You know what I mean? You know, Earl Spence did it. He hopped in the ring with Sean Porter, won his fight. You see what I mean? And then they were able to make that fight happen immediately afterwards. So, you know, that's just something that PBC is doing at this point in time. And I don't really agree with it. You see what I mean? I don't really agree with it right now, especially if I'm on Sebastian Fundora's team, because if he were to take on the fight against Earl Spence, he would have to vacate his WBO title. You know what I mean? And then going from there, Terrence Crawford would have to fight the WBO number one guy 
and Josh Kelly. Do we want to see Terrence Crawford versus Josh Kelly for the vacant WBO title? Absolutely not, man. That makes zero sense because for all that, Terrence Crawford might as well fight Jerron Ennis because Jerron Ennis is a bigger money fight in my opinion. Josh Kelly is relatively unknown in the States. And, you know, it's not like this dude is a world champion or has accomplished anything. You see what I mean? The last I heard from Josh Kelly, he had gotten cooked by the guy that Terrence Crawford had put to sleep, David Evanesian. You see what I mean? So uh, I don't think that fight really makes sense at all, man. It just seems like Earl Spence is interjecting himself in a situation that he is not deserving of at this point in time. Like I said, you fight Tim Zhu and you come out victorious against Tim Zhu, which he's, uh, Tim Zhu is willing to take on that opportunity. You know what I mean? He's going after the old school fighter model. And he said that if they want a good scrap, they call him. You see what I mean? So it seems like he's with the shits. You know what I mean? I think that Earl Spence needs to do more building. You know, he needs to redeem himself. He has to he has to wait in line like Terrence Crawford said. You know what I mean? And, you know, build yourself back up. So I agree with Terrence Crawford a thousand percent on this situation, man. I spoke with Bo Mack. He doesn't seem too worried about it at all. You know what I'm saying? And that's just what the situation is. Now, on top of all of that, if this when the WBO mandates this next week, Sebastian Fundora will have two mandatories because the guy that he was supposed to fight initially and Serhi Bohachuk um, just came off of a sensational win against Brian Mendoza, somebody that Tim Zhu had just beat and also somebody that Sebastian Fundora has lost to. You see what I mean? So Sebastian Fundora is going to be set to have two mandatories, Serhi Bohachuk and Terrence Crawford. You know what I'm saying? So he has three... Three things that he's going to, three options that's in front of him, but he's understanding that if he faces Ter uh, Earl Spence, he might make a little bit more money, but he's going to have to lose a belt as a result. Um, if he takes on Terrence Crawford, that's a high risk type of fight, but you may still get some type of financial compensation. And if you were to somehow defeat the number one pound for pound fighter in the world, it could definitely pay dividends later on in your career. Or if you just put on a great effort, it'll put you in more opportunities to get bigger fights and all that type of stuff. So it seems like it's a it's a conflict going on with Sebastian Fundura. You know, like I said, it's a gift that he's being presented these type of fights, but it's a curse because... Um, you know, it seems like each one has its pros and cons. You see what I mean? So if he fights Earl Spence, he'll make more money, but he won't be the unified champion anymore. And Terrence Crawford is going to have to, you know, fight Josh Kelly for that vacant title if that were to happen. Um, Serhi Bohachuk is there. Somebody who has close to 100% knockout ratio in his wins. You know what I mean? So um, all these are dangerous fights. They all have their pros and cons. I'm, I'm assuming Serhi Bohachuk is at the end of the line at, at this point in time. So with that being known, it's like Earl or Crawford. You know what I mean? It seems like his management is leaning more towards, towards Earl, but the boxing fans seem to be more leaning towards Crawford. Crawford is more deserving of this opportunity. I want to see this man um, attempt to be a four-division world champion. On top of that, I want to see how... Terrence Crawford is able to neutralize Sebastian Fundora's height and his reach because typically Terrence Crawford has the reach advantage in 99.9% .9 of his fights. As far as I'm concerned, I believe Terrence Crawford has like a 74 inch reach. You know what I mean? Um, in comparison to uh, Sebastian Fundora, who has an 80 inch reach. You see what I mean? So it's going to be very, very uh, interesting to see how he overcomes this situation. Um, he does have a 74-inch arm reach, as a matter of fact. So um, with Sebastian Fondora having an 80-inch reach, I want to see how he's able to deal with that. You know, I've seen Terrence Crawford fight one tall fighter, Jose Benavidez. And it was definitely some obstacles for him to overcome prior to the stoppage. You know what I mean? So I want to see how he goes up against a 6-6 towering inferno and Sebastian Fondora. I love that fight. You know, it's very meaningful. Two belts on the line. And, you know, it could put Terrence Crawford in a position where he could fight for undisputed again. Why not? You know what I'm saying? Um, if he were to, you know, hypothetically speaking, if he were to beat Sebastian Fundora, he could fight Serhi Bohachuk. Uh, he could fulfill that mandatory. Or, you know, he could just go after the other guys who currently have the belts in the division. You know? So that's my take on the situation, man. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this here. I think I'm going to title this video, you know, Earl Spence trying to interject himself as something that, you know, doesn't, uh, which is, I don't even know how I'm going to go about this, but regardless, man, that's the situation that's going on with Sebastian Fundor. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this here. This is Mizuma TV. Thank you very much for tuning in. I'm out of here, man. Peace.